Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. Welcome to a new book review for this week. And this morning I just hooked in and finished this book. Look at all the little post-it notes that made some kind of an impact on me. This book is by a Russian author and I don't know how to pronounce his name, but his name is Yevgeny Zamyatin, I probably said it wrong, Zamyatin, possibly, I don't know. He published this book in 1921. It is, they say, one of the very first dystopian novels and the ones that inspired books from George Orwell, such as 1984 and Aldous Huxley, and also a book by Ayn Rand as well. People say that this has inspired a whole heap of other science fiction books. This is a book that I found in, where did I find it? I think it was one of these free books that the University of Third Age had on their bookshelves and they were trying to get rid of them. And because I saw the vintage vintage book I thought right I'll, I'll get it and read it and I was really surprised I think my biggest life lesson that I got out of this book from the very first moment I started reading it is that there is no such thing as an original idea anymore as I read it more and more I started to think about George Orwell's 1984 and I started to think about all the other movies of science fiction and future utopian societies in some kind of totalitarian mass surveillance state. And there's a lot of movies and books about these. Here it was being written about in 1921. So not an original idea. And from this spurred a whole heap of other books. But I must say one of the biggest things as I was reading this book is that I found the language very difficult. It is translated from Russian and the translator's name, it was translated in 2006, translated by uh, Natasha S. Randall. Like I said, I had never even heard of this author I never knew of this book and I simply picked it out on a whim because the testimonial on the back here was from George Orwell, who said, this is a book to look out for. Now, what is this book about and what are some of the themes and why did I get this life lesson that there's no original idea anymore? Effectively, this book is about a future dystopic society. It is set in the 26th century in a state called One Nation and it is really a totalitarian state that is under mass surveillance. In fact, it's made all of glass. Every action could be seen by every other person. All the people are uniformed and everything happens at the same time. Their lives are dedicated and they follow a schedule called the table of hours. Every minute of the day, every hour of the day is set aside for something for them to do that everyone does at exactly the same time. Now, as I was reading this, I was horrified. I thought, this is not a society that I ever, ever want to be a part of. It is mass surveillance as we are mass survey. Um, we've got mass surveillance in our society as well, but not to this extent extent where each and every minute of our day is measured and accounted for. This is pure hell for me. The other th thing that is pure hell for me, it is a society that is based on the methods and the philosophies of Taylor. Now for any management student out there, who would know the, the theories of Frederick Taylor, the fact that every minute is accounted, every task is done to the, to the exact detail. This is stuff of MBA nightmares. And I remember when uh, I did my MBA, Taylor was a theorist uh, that we had to study and I just thought it was utterly horrible. But this society thrives on Taylor. Everything is done to the exact minute. It is a society that is based on reason and logic and mathematics and things like creativity, imagination, dreams, frivolities is just not accepted because they're seen as bad for the society, for the one nation. We 
Кровь и плоть. Города под куполом. Эти красные платья и духи уничтожили миллиарды людей. Женщины сгубили планету? Страсти. Не вперед вам. Государство 200 лет, а сколько мы знали благодетелей? Только одного. The One Nation also is looked after by what's known as the Bureau of Guardians, and they are basically the police state, I would say. What we have is we have a character by the name of D503. Oh, that's another thing. They don't have names. Everyone is a number. So D503 is a spacecraft engineer, and they're building this spacecraft called the Integral. And they want this Integral to go out into other planets and try and put the One Nation state out to them, you know, think russian communism anyway they want to put kind of like their one nation state into other other planets so d503 sets up writing a journal and he figures he's going to write a journal and this journal is going to travel on a spaceship so that people could read about the process of what he went through and did during one of the allotted hours of his freedom where they could go outside and walk he was walking with his girlfriend who was assigned by one nation and her name was o90 and with a friend of his as well and they come across this lady who really he strikes a fancy with her and her name is god what was her name i all these numbers i cannot remember the numbers i 330 so i 330 this female is unlike the other females the other people in that one nation she smokes she drinks she flirts and she takes a liking to d what was the number 530 she takes a liking to D. Okay, I'll just call them D by now. God, it's so hard if you had a number for a name. She takes a liking to him. He's just really enamored and he can't really console this, this idea of why he's having these feelings because for him, feelings are irrelevant. Everything's going to be logic. Everything's going to be reason-based and he wants to dob her in to the Bureau of Guardians. It's what the Greeks called love. She invites him to this ancient house and this ancient house is the only house in this glass panopticon that has walls and it's kind of like an old museum that has an old lady right at the front. So she sneaks him in and they have sex there and he he, he is even more enamored by, by this idea. But he's at odds with himself and he always wants to leave that place and go and dob her in but he never does she disappears from this house at times so you start to think maybe there are tunnels under this house maybe she goes somewhere and indeed that's what happens the story is that there is an outside world a world outside of one nation because there's this big massive wall and the one nation do not want people going outside of the wall and is a whole new society a society of people who wear kind of like animal skins and everything outside the wall now what happens is that o90 the girlfriend gets wants to be pregnant and wants uh d to inseminate her but you know he's having issues he doesn't really want to but she says she's going to hand over the kid to the one nation which is technically what you're supposed to do when you have a child then what he does he tries to uh, get her outside of one nation and into this new world so that she could finally have her child in peace so to speak one of the most horrific things that that i was reading in the book was the fact that there was this broad program where everyone had to be put under this operation because there was some dissent during the vote day and the vote day you can just imagine everyone voted for the same benefactor or the same god the same person who was looking after the one nation it wasn't much of a democratic voting process there was dissension in the ranks and so the one nation decides that this entire program of putting people through this big operation where it removes their imagination completely. And I found this horrific because people were lining up saying, we don't want imagination, we don't want, we, we want to always be in this happy state. And this happy state is dictated by the one nation, by the benefactor, by the powers that be that tell us how to be happy and how to behave. I thought that very 
just abhorrent. The whole idea was abhorrent. In, in some way you could see already from what I'm saying that there are elements of other science fiction novels and certainly George Orwell's 1984 the, with the Panopticon state with this, I guess, uh, relationship between the male character and the female character, where it's very similar, very similar to this. And I'm sure that there are other science fiction novels and also science fiction movies that I've seen that all lay around the same kind of themes, the themes of a surveillance state, dystopia, not knowing right from wrong or being that is being, I guess, quashed to be human, just the idea that people want to break free, people want to break free, but if they do, you know, it comes at a cost to them. You could even l liken this to uh, Margaret Atwood's uh, A Handmaid's Tale. I would say, again, very similar themes uh, of a future dystopic society that is under mass surveillance. And so I was really surprised reading this book, which was written back in 1921 for its creativity and its imagination. But at the same time, I thought, well, the author was really using the knowledge, I guess, and what and observations of what was happening in communist Russia. And he penned it in a fictional way and made it, I guess, even worse than what it was, maybe, who knows, or maybe similar, who knows, into a book that made us sit, think long and hard about what it means to be living under such a repressive, oppressive rule. The life lesson for me in here was sometimes reading some really, really old books. The authors that you loved yourself, they had to be inspired from somewhere. I don't think that they would have come up with these ideas themselves. They would have read something, they would have heard a piece of music, they would have heard a story from somewhere. Somewhere, somehow, they would have then penned their own story. And it's the story that society then knows so well. The other thing is, given that I live in a Western world, Australia, kind of like a lot of the fiction that I read is all based from Western societies. So England, Europe, uh, America. So I only get that kind of Western view. We don't get any other fiction or get access to fiction written by people from other countries. We do now, given that we've got the internet and we've got everything at our fingertips. But you can imagine in 1921, it would have been very different. They certainly wouldn't have had the choice that we have nowadays, uh, simply at their fingertips. So I do start to realize that, you know, that there is no true original idea. Every person on this earth has heard a story has read books or read articles or read something that would have fired up an imagination and that, that would they would have created something from it. So I'm glad I read this book, but I, I have to warn you that it is not an easy read. I had to sometimes read it out loud. One of the things I did find helpful in this book are that the chapters are very short. So you can really take your time in reading it. You don't have to just kind of start getting overwhelmed by by the language the dialogue seems to be stilted it seems as if no one has a very full conversation they stop their sentences quite short and then you have to well i had to read it out loud to try and get the gist of what they were saying and in the undercurrent i guess of the words you start to get the feeling of right okay this is what he's implying this is what he is saying i read also about the author that he was in exile from russia as well being a bolshevik he is was a true creative he didn't uh, agree with the politics of russia he didn't agree with any of that so he write he wrote a satire in fiction and actually the authorities didn't like it so he escaped for a while to other countries. You know when you read about people like that you read about artists who do this and artists are the true I guess the people the true people who can show a situation for what it is and they are gutsy enough to be able to express it in ways that authorities then go hmm you know uh are they trying to are they trying to say something or not and i think george orwell even said something like this that poets in a a totalitarian state the totalitarian the authority state really can't tell if the poets are really 
<laughs> taking the piss. And believe it or not, you know, now that, now that I mentioned about George Orwell and poets, there is a poet in here, and it's the friend of D530, and he writes poetry that is expressed, that is said out loud during public executions. And I, I, I thought to myself, God, a poet would never do that. A poet would never do that. A poet wouldn't express themselves in that way and certainly take part in a society like this. Poets are wonderful people. Poets are... We need more poetry in, in life, don't we? That is my review and my life lesson of Zamatyan's Zamayatan. I can't even say his name. We. I would recommend this novel simply because it is novel. It is kind of like first of its kind, so why not read it? It's one that has given birth to other scientific